Hi dear, I am Dr. Praveen Kaur Gupta, and this videos are a series only made for you. Learning histopathology is never easy, and you have always been so worried about it, but no further here on. So in this series that I am starting, I am looking for the understanding of the histology first, and based on the normal histology, I will talk about histopathology, and not only that, we will also have the entire features clinically and how to diagnose them. Well, guys, if you are ready with it. Ensure that you watch the video completely, and before you go to it, like the video and subscribe to my channel. Let's start it discussing and learning the view era of histopathology. Hi everyone. In this video, we'll talk about the topic of liver and its chronic venous condition. Well, this question has been asked multiple times in PGME and also in second year. Chronic venous condition. Well, let's first understand what is the meaning of conditions. Suppose you are passing on the road and you see a road jam, traffic jam. There can be two reasons. Number one, more car coming inside the roads or less car going out of the road. If more car come in the road, it is called as hyperemia. That means arterial dilatation causing more blood flow into the tissue is called as hyperemia. But if the venous outflow is blocked, it is called as condition. Venous outflow is blocked, is called as condition. So, arterial dilatation is hyperemia. Venous obstruction is called as condition. Now, these two things can occur actually in the vascular disorders of liver. How does a normal flow of liver occur? Look at its normal anatomy. Normally, a liver has a central vein and has polar tract. A liver has a central vein and a polar tract. The polar tract has a duct artery and vein. And because this area has the artery, so that you can expect the artery, the blood flows from this area to this area, like this. It flows from this area to this area. Now, this flow is actually called as the normal flow of the liver because this is how the liver shows its flow to the hepatocytes as well. Because look at the spring cells, these all are hepatocytes. These hepatocytes, 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 and the white area in between them is called as sinusoids. So, what happens? When the blood is flowing from the artery to the veins, the blood also diffuses out. So, blood flow is surely around zone 1, you see, then goes to zone 2 and then goes to the zone 3. What may happen is, sometimes there can be condition. Condition means the outflow of this area is completely blocked. When the outflow is blocked, what will happen? Will lead to a venous condition. Well, the condition can be an acute venous condition or can be chronic venous condition. If I ask you, tell me one thing, if there is a venous condition, which zone will have the first ischemia? We will all answer, sir, it will be occurring in the zone 3, because this is the area where there is a vein and this area has an artery. So, blood flows from this area to this area. So, because the outflow is blocked here, this area doesn't get the blood supply and therefore this area gets ischemia. The blood is not able to flow from zone 1 to zone 3. This area has a block is there. This area has a block is there. Now, what happens when there's a chronic venous condition? See, acute venous condition will have what? Will have the initial injury and hence we see hydropic change around zone 3. Let's move to the chronic venous condition. Now imagine this is central vein here and the blood was flowing into central vein but the outflow is completely blocked here. The outflow here is completely blocked. This area is completely blocked the outflow. So blood is not able to come into this area. Gradually, this area will have dilation of sinusoids. And look how dread they have become. Unless the blood does not flow from zone 1 towards zone 3. Let's assume the zone 1 is somewhere here. This zone 1. And the blood is flowing from here. It is coming down to here. Okay. But this area is blocked. So what happens? The blood is not able to flow here. So on one side, the sinusoids have got dilated. But other side, the hepatocytes between them have all got necrosed. Hepatocytes, they have all got necrosed. This whole area appears red in color. And the zone 1 area has no ischemia. Why? It is an artery. And therefore, that area undergoes a fibrosis because of increase in pressure. So, every area which has zone 1 will undergo white in color. And every area which is zone 3 will undergo red in color. So, zone 1 area in the entire liver is white. Zone 3 in the entire liver is red. It is called as a nutmeg liver. So, nut, nut, nutmeg liver occurs like this. You can clearly see the red white, red, white, red, white, red, white areas. This whole thing is called as a nutmeg liver. Like a jayafal, I see this red, white areas. The question of an ask is, red area is what? It's zone 3. White area is what? Zone 1. 
Third question asked is in zone three, what is do you find? In zone three, you find necrosis of the liver cells and some sort of dilatation, and hence the entire area is appearing red in color. Zone one shows peripotal fibrosis, and hence called typically nutmeg liver. So chronic hepatic condition shows nutmeg liver. A chronic splenic condition shows gamma candy bodies. Both of them occur due to the right heart failure, which is causing the backward pressure to the heart, and hence this important histopathology are seen. I hope you like this video. I was able to explain to you the normal anatomy, histopathology, and you could understand the entire thing out. If you really like this video, ensure that you put your comments in the section below so I can put more videos to you in the upcoming days. Waiting for your comments. God bless you all. Keep hustling, keep studying, and do the best of your abilities. Bye bye.